one of the great names of Australian rock and roll. I'd like you to welcome Glenn Shorrock with his new hit single, Rock and Roll Soldier. Make him welcome. <laughs> Is it more, more power? It's more power. We've no more power, Captain. <laughs> Have a seat. So I've got to tell you, that's a knockout song. I Thank haven't you. heard it before. What was it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to Glenn. Hello. <laughs> what, uh, what, what's the inspiration about it? Because it's, it's it, quite a moody piece, isn't it? Yeah, it's terrific. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the inspiration comes from um, people who are absolutely um, what's the word? Besotted uh, by the whole music. No, 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 no. The what? roadies. They're, they're infallible. They're um, uh, necessary for uh, what we do, you know. Right, I've right. worked with road crews and roadies for a long time. Yeah. And become very friendly with a lot of them. Yeah. 
And uh, this song is about the rock and roll soldiers. They're the GIs, you know, they're the guys in the trenches. They're the way, uh, actually, they do awfully hard work, don't they? Yeah. I mean, while you guys have to rest between towns, that sort of thing, they're out there putting up those huge speakers yeah. and getting up the lights and It's the heavy thing. work and it's, it's thankless work as well. Although these days they're getting paid a bit better than they used to. Yeah. We all are. But what What's the story on your tour? <laughs> we all are, yeah. yes. <laughs> what's the story on your tour? Because the papers this morning implied you'd cancelled it. Yeah, I did. I, I pulled the plug on it after a week in Melbourne. What? Why? I made a mistake. I went out too early. You know, what, what, do you, what do you want to do to, before you go out again? Well, I, the, the album comes out in three weeks' time, and uh, uh, I was on a very tight profit margin thing. I right. wasn't going to earn any, earn any money out of this tour anyway. Right. But after the first uh, six gigs, I lost $2,000, so I thought, you know, there's no, no fun in this. No. <laughs> so I've just postponed it a bit. Yeah, I'll right. just take it off the road for four, four weeks or so, and then... Maybe before Christmas, go out again. Right after the record's out too. Of course, you'll have a bit more impact. Cause it, it, it just it just goes to show you that it, you know it's not all beer and skittles out there. And uh, uh, even somebody who's got a background such as me, you can't rely on that. You know, no. um, a lot of bands go out there and lose money. But they have to do it to sell their records. Yeah, it's a vicious circle, though, isn't it, in this country? Because a lot of the bands don't earn much from records, and they go out to promote right. them, and they don't earn much from the gigs that are promoting the records and all that right. sort of thing. What, how are you finding it also in that sort of feel? With the, the, now it's Glenn Shorrock, apart from the Little River Band. It's a, it's a complete professional break, totally and utterly, isn't it? From, from the band? From the band, yeah. Sure, yeah. And, and uh, is, does that mean you have to reassess things and work out how to establish yourself again? Well, I've had nine months to think about that. Um, I left in February, and that was coming. Uh, it was coming for the last year, really. Um, now I've, I've got lots of things to do. I've, I'm doing a screen test for a movie part later on this week, and uh, I've got a TV show that I'm starting to work on now. I've been opening my mouth about this thing yeah. for so long. I'll put my money where my mouth is, and that'll go into production um, January and February of next next year. Yeah. Uh, talking of the movie thing, uh, we were talking uh, uh, with Johnny O'Keefe's widow and uh, uh, a few people the other day about J.O.K. And there was that project which is around for a long time, mm. to star you in the movie of Johnny O'Keefe. And I think it's a great shame it didn't come up because he not is. only could you do a, a good recreation of him, but there's also a good physical resemblance yeah, or exactly. enough of it to make it be a very credible movie. Exactly. Sometimes it frightens me when I watch myself. You know, I can see a lot of O'Keefe and what I do. Although I was never really that that much inspired by him. No. But it's just a it's just a quirk of it's just the body it movements and then the face yeah. and everything too, isn't right. it? What happened to that project? I don't know. It's I think it's on somebody's shelf somewhere gathering dust. <laughs> but, uh, we see uh, Reg Grundy was going to make the film, and right. then he decided to make Grundy Land in um, in Surface Paradise. So yeah. I think he shelved that. Right. I've heard that somebody else is going to produce it, but I think I may be getting a bit long in the tooth to be playing. <laughs> Playing a 20 year old uh, rock and roll star. Mate, they can do wonderful things with lighting. Look can at they? me. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, uh, I've, got, I've got some great clips here because Glenn's career goes back an awfully long way for a young man, and uh, there was the Twilights originally, right? Yes, from Adelaide. And, and this is the Twilights from Adelaide, right? Oh, great. What you think looks a pink can fool you, and it fooled me. Remember that one? Yeah. I don't remember it specifically. Yeah. Yeah. I say, he, he does this to me every time I come on, I start to feel like Shirley Temple. <laughs> Imagine how, how she, she must have felt, at 50, whatever she is now, and watching herself at three year old. Yeah, it'd be, be terrifying. Well, I had a lovely thing the other day. We had Dorothy Damore on the program, and of course, you get film buffs like John Michael Houston or Bill Collins or something, and they can tell you every film that Dorothy Damore's made and everything, right? Yeah. And which order and everything. And Dorothy sat down and said, I can't remember which road film came first. Which I thought was rather lovely. You know, it was just a job to her she way back. She couldn't remember it She either. couldn't remember no. it herself. But, you know, other people do. And it'd be the same with you because you've been writing songs for 20 years now. Mm hmm How many songs I've... would you have written? Not many. I'm a really lazy songwriter. Are you? Um, probably about 100, I guess. What's been, like... what, what's been like in the last nine months? Have you found that now that you've sort of got time to sit down and think for yourself? Oh, yeah. I've, I've been able to write a lot more, definitely. And, of course, I don't have to compete with the other guys who wrote who wrote great songs as well. Right, right. I mean, Graham writes terrific songs, and so does B. Yeah. So there was always that healthy competition going on. Yeah. But now I'm free. Like, my new album's got uh, eight songs of mine on it, I think. And um, it leaves me free now to expand myself a little bit more. How long's it take you, to, how long's it take you to write a song? 
Oh, oh sometimes five minutes, sometimes five years. Rock and Roll Soldier, I started in 1973. So it's been around that long? Yeah, and then I put it away because I was embarrassed by the title. Right. Rock and Roll Soldier, because I related it to me, right? Yeah. To the rock and roll hero. And then I found this other way of saying the tribute to the road crew, you know, and it gave it more credibility. Yeah. I just thought the title was a bit of a cliche. It still is, but, you know, I can't yeah. escape it. I couldn't think of anything else. But do you, do you, are you one of those writers who gets the word first? Do you get the idea for a song first, or does the music A come phrase, first? you know, like help is on its way, a cliche, like cool change. Yeah. Uh, those sort of things spark an idea. And I've already got some musical ideas mapped out on, on tape from a piano or from a guitar or from kazoo. My wife's threatening to start to write songs now, which is a bit of a worry. <laughs> is this a declaration of independence, do you think? Or? Well, she was up, uh, she, she, she co-wrote some lyrics with me uh, in the house in January. She was up there and I was plonking away and writing stuff down. And she said, how about, I said, shut up, I'm working. You know. <laughs> she said, well, how about this? And I thought, oh, that's good, that's rather good. That's a bit worrying, isn't no, it? I know. She might be talented. <laughs> she is talented. Yeah, it, it's quite amazing with uh, songs. I, I had to do a, a Desert Island Disc program the other day for the ABC. That's the thing where they ask you to list a number of records, your favourite oh, yeah. records. And I was going through it, and I started, when I found out nearly all the songs I personally like were ballads, and they're all about unhappy romances or depression <laughs> and that, and I thought, God help us, every songwriter must be a manic depressive. Well, you know, you get very few happy songs, do you? They're all about there are tragedy, some. broken love affairs, life on the road being tough. There are some. I, I, I especially like that one, uh, Don't Put Your Feet on the Table, Father, Give the Cheese a Go. I think that's, <laughs> that's a jolly one, yeah. And uh, my, another one of my favourite, I'm looking through the knot hole in my father's wooden leg. <laughs> that's a lovely song. Yeah. You know the one, I'm looking through a knot hole in my father's wooden leg. Do you, know, do you know the second verse? <laughs> I hope you I do. Think. <laughs> Could you do it for us then? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right, Michael. I mean, most... It was actually taught to me by Judith McGrath, my coach, my... Uh... Voice coach. Voice coach. Okay. Would you hear it or not? Uh, I, I think I used the same one. OK. I think I went better rehearsals, didn't it, really? Do you get, you get to do it for us or not? Sorry, I thought... No, I don't even know. Could you do I'm, the first I'm, line? I'm making them up. I know, I know. I'm it's excellent. He's in them. trouble now. <laughs> so just do the first line again and then he can do the second one in French. One. OK. I'm looking through a knot hole in my father's wooden leg. Geoffrey? Je peux, je pense, et un tour. Oh, no. So, Glenn, the, the, this, the, the, the moment, it's, it's the new single, which I reckon is a knockout. I think you've got a real hit there, genuinely. And, and the record, the, the LP that comes with it, and then a tour of Australia, and then a film, perhaps? Then a tour of, I don't know, Papua New Guinea, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then now, a television show. The, the TV show is, is, is in my head, you know. Right. That's, that's the thing I really want to get going. Right. Well, I'm you're... looking forward to... Uh, to producing a classy show. But I'll, I'll always be with music, and, and of course the show will have a lot of musical content. Right. Yeah, well, if, I, if I get stuck, I can always sing a song. That's right, yeah. I have the same thing. <laughs> 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 Glenn Shark, ladies and gentlemen. Good to see you, Glenn. Is the record out now? Yeah. Good. Not, okay. not the album, just the single. The single. Rock and Roll Soldier. We'll take a break. Well, we've got a good act to follow you. Carlotta from Lay Girls. 21 years of Lay Girls. <laughs> 